Hey guys, welcome back to another Gaming Memories video. Here we are looking at the third video in the series of racing games only seen in Japan. And yet again we will be looking at another selection of unique racing games that were released in Japan only for the PlayStation. Where each of them have their own unique features and fun aspects that were very popular but also quite unheard of for the most part. So you will find out more about these unique games and some of them you may not even have known existed. So before we dive into the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and also hit the bell icon as there will be more videos in this series sharing yet more racing games that were released in Japan only on the PlayStation. And be sure to share the video with other like-minded gamers as it will help to open up a new avenue of other unique racing games that have yet to be explored. So to find out more about these games, let's dive in. Back in 1997, saw a collaboration between Electronic Arts and Nissan with the intention to create a game to celebrate the Nissan Skyline's anniversary. And we are presented with Overdriven Skyline Memorial that was released in the Japan region only at that time. And the game uses similar gameplay visuals and aesthetics to that of the very first Need for Speed game. Primarily the game is reskinned using a lot of the similar models and features from the original Need for Speed game but a lot of elements were replaced with the likes of the cars as they were authentic to Nissan from different eras within the timeline of the platform of the Skyline brand. And with the game itself comes a lot of the information based around the cars. It gives you a lot of details around the cars history, the power outputs, how popular they were in demand, how much they sold and their lifespans, with multiple versions of each car to play in the game, along with some additional tracks thrown into the mix to extend the play experience. So essentially this is quite simply a need for speed game that you may not have heard of. And if you want to experience a piece of long forgotten history that you may not even have known about, then Overdriven Skyline Memorial will be worth looking into. Option Tuning Car Battle Spec R is the third and final entry in the series and like its predecessors is exclusive only in Japan. And like the previous games it focuses on street racing, on tracks based around mountain style environments and even race tracks with different types of modes that you can play in both an arcade and even simulation focused racing. And very similar to the likes of the Gran Turismo series it has a selection of of highly sought after and classic Japanese sports cars. Anything from brands the likes of Nissan, Toyota, Subaru, Mitsubishi, Honda, to name but a few. With the ability to be able to upgrade each of the vehicles with customized parts to enhance the overall power of each car so that they can go faster and to even add other visual related items, body kits, alloy wheels and so forth. And the game further improves on the overall visual quality of the game compared to the previous two titles in the series as even with the second game which was very good graphically this game really steps it up a notch in terms of the visuals that are on screen to a point that it is considered to be one of the best visually impressive racing games on the ps1 although the sense of speed in the game itself like the previous entry in the series may not be as fast paced compared to other style racers on the system but it definitely more than makes up for with the amount of content that's available within the game as there are plenty of tracks lots of cars to choose from and graphically the game is just phenomenal to look at it's a fun game to play even though difficult to master but if you're looking for something that has a unique mix of all of these style elements where you have access to all of these classic cars and you love the Japanese style of racing racing on highways and city streets then the third entry in the option tuning car series is definitely worth a look at The PlayStation is home to some of the most iconic arcade racers of all time and in the mid 90s there was a plethora of games being released on the system 
and Racing Groovy Versus was no exception. Released in 1997, Racing Groovy Versus was developed with the intention to be a competitive alternative to the likes of the Ridge Racer series and other well-known arcade racers at that time. The game is heavily influenced and is inspired by the Ridge Racer series and other arcade racers as it uses a lot of very similar gameplay visuals and aesthetics for the time period with very similar graphical styles, gameplay mechanics and various other elements that you would be very familiar with with those type of games. Even down to the level selection which primarily focuses around three racing tracks all with their own unique quirks and difficulties that really test the player to their absolute limits as this was a common practice with these type of games back at that time. The one thing to note about racing groovy versus as with other racing games there is a steep learning curve compared to likes of Ridge Racer whereas it can be quite difficult to win races so you do need to have quite a bit of patience and you do have to put in a lot of practice to really get the benefit out of the game. But overall a very good and worthwhile racing experience and if you're into something that is very similar to all of those arcade racers on the PlayStation and you want a similar experience then Racing Groovy Versus is definitely a game worth checking out so I highly recommend you go and have a look at it. Doozy J, unlike the other games on this list, is essentially a drag racing game that was developed and released on the PlayStation in Japan only in 1997. The game also received a port onto the Sega Saturn with a lot of similar features and gameplay visuals and so forth. But unlike a lot of other racing games released in Japan, this game wasn't 3D. It didn't implement or use 3D graphics. It used 2D sprites for the visuals on the screen and graphically although for the graphics that are on offer it looks very good but it looks more like a mobile style game or even an early game that you would have seen on 16-bit consoles the likes of the Sega Mega Drive and Super Nintendo so the game has you racing through different types of tournaments you have a vast selection of cars available anything from the Toyota Celica GT4, Toyota Supra, Nissan Skyline, Toyota MR2 Mazda RX-7, there's a lot of classic and well sought after JDM classics, JDM performance cars that are on alpha and you have the ability to upgrade your cars using different materials, engine parts to increase the power outputs of the car so that you can gain advantages in the race. You have also the ability to be able to change the different transmission types as well so that you can change it from manual to auto transmission to whichever suits your own preference as the player. But aside from the simplicity the graphics. The gameplay is quite tough for a beginner to really pick up and play because it's all about timing. You have to initiate the gear changes at the correct time in order to gain the best possible start and you have to use the perfect shift in the gear ratios to be able to maintain your speed and to increase your speed so that you can eventually be defeat your opponent which is not an easy thing to do so the game can get quite difficult but as you progress through the different stages and upgrade your car races will gradually become easier but at the same time as you progress through the campaign the computer AI also becomes equally as difficult to beat as well. For the most part the game wasn't as well received compared to other racers on the system but not only that this game is quite unheard of in Japan. There are not many people that know that this type of game even existed on the system. So if you're looking for something a little bit different and you want something that's a bit more old school and if you are into drag racing then Doozy J might be worth looking into. Rally Day Africa is a unique arcade racing game that was heavily inspired by Sega Rally which only saw a release in Japan back in 1998 and from the gameplay visuals and the aesthetics even down to the control system it is very very reflective of the very popular Sega Rally as at that point the game was the benchmark of arcade rally racers and had been for some time so you can definitely see the influence 
balance of all of the elements presented in this game although it's not as well refined as Sega Rally it definitely offers a very unique and fun challenge the gameplay can be difficult to master for the most part but it is an overall very enjoyable game and is considered a hidden gem and it's a pity that this game never got a release outside of the Japanese region as this game would have done quite well as it is fun it has very colorful style graphics it has very large and open-ended and wide tracks to race on and you do have access to different game modes from spot races to championships so when you win races you can unlock additional and extra cars or tuned up versions of the cars that are already there to enhance the gameplay experience all in all a hidden gem that's on the playstation and is quite a unique rally game especially when you compare it to other games on the system and is a very very good comparison to an all time classic arcade rally game so if you're looking for something that is quite unique and that does have a lot of similarities to Sega Rally that was only released on the PlayStation then Rally the Africa could be the game for you Joro Q3 is the third entry in the series that was released in Japan only in 1998 and continues on the same format as the previous two titles with the quirky and unique cartoon style graphics and quirky handling characteristics. The game offers up a different selection of cars compared to the first two titles while also giving access to different types of tracks where you can race off road, race on race tracks even to a point where you can race on train tracks in one of the levels. It is a fun and quirky title like the previous two titles but it's not without its inherent flaws as it does have similar flaws to the previous two games in the series in terms of the collision detection and the handling mechanics of the cars in question where the cars can go into random drifts at any given point as the controls can be quite twitchy and sensitive for the most part which can hamper or hinder your progress throughout play but if you get used to the control system you'll be able to master it to a point that you will be able to get the most out of your experience. The game also utilizes different game modes where you can have free play jumping straight into races and even Grand Prix mode but in this version of the game you also have the ability to be able to go through somewhat of a story mode where you do have access to different types of areas that you can explore in turn that you can do challenges and specific type of events in turn that can earn you coins or currency which will help you to unlock extra features throughout the course of play and unlock other areas and so forth to progress through the campaign like the previous two titles it is a fun game to play if you're familiar with the games in the series this is more of the same and if you're looking for something that is similar to those type of games then the third game in the series is also worth checking out Naniwa Wangan Battle is a street racing game set in Osaka, Japan and the game features a unique variety of classic JDM sports cars from Nissan to Honda to Mazda that were very popular in the mid 90s. The gameplay consists of street racing events around Osaka, Japan and allows for progression through the story mode for racers to earn currency for winning races so that they can upgrade their cars to enhance the overall characteristics of each vehicle in the game. As with other racers that were released in Japan, this game is very very similar in a lot of its visual aesthetics and playability features but this game unlike the others does have a select few features that you don't see in other racing games from that region as the game also does have access to different features and even sponsors from likes of different branded tuning car companies in Japan and even cameos from a real life DJ from Japan that does the voiceovers in the game. The game is fun to play although it's not as well refined in terms of the handling physics compared to other racers that are on the system. The handling can be a little bit on the twitchy side 
and is not as fluent. But if you're willing to overlook the flaws in the game, there is a decent racer here that is worth a look at. Especially if you're into street racing. If you like this type of racing game where you do race around the streets of Japan, this is another one of those unique racers that would be worth a look at. Our truck battle is a very different but quite unique truck racing game that was released for the PlayStation in 1998 and was exclusive only in Japan. The concept behind this game is that it's based off a very popular truck based culture known as Deco Tora that is quite similar to the likes of the tuning car scene but only it's based on trucks where owners heavily modify their lorries and their trucks to showcase for different types of events and even to compete like in races whereas but the idea of this game is that you're racing on the highways within Japan in Tokyo and in different locations with the aim to beat rivals on the track so each race you have to race from one point of a location to another to reach the end of the destination and you're pitted against an opponent and you have to defeat them and get to the finish before they do in order to win the race and in doing so you can rack up points and earn currency so that you can upgrade your trucks as you progress through the campaign. All in all this is a very different style title even though the gameplay it's fast paced but it is quite linear as you are restricted to literally just the highways that you're racing on but it is very very different and if you're looking for something that definitely stands out among other racing games that is on the system this might be a game that could be worth looking into. Released in 1998, Wangan Trial is a very unique and also very rare game that was released on the PlayStation in Japan only, as it was an exclusive to that region. And this is a very authentic arcade style racer that focuses on particular street racing where players are tasked with racing around the streets and highways of Tokyo. In well known examples of highly popular JDM classic sports cars, mainly with the Toyota Celica GT4, Toyota Supra, Nissan 300ZX and a lot of other classic cars from that time. The game also consists of a lot of unique elements in terms of even the visuals but where it really shines is the overall control structure of each of the cars in the game. They all handle differently but the one thing to note is this game has one of the best handling physics of most racing games on the system at that time as the controls are very fluent and very responsive and you feel like you have full control over the car anytime even at high speeds and the game does present a really good arcade feel to a point that when you're going through races you can start off by racing in the daytime and gradually as the race goes on you will eventually see the daytime change to dark and it also reflects on the environment where you will see lights on the buildings even the street lights and it has a very reflective outlook on the environment even in terms of the car and just the overall feel so it really set its own tone and set its own style vibe that's very unique so if you're on the lookout for something that's quite unique that is very very rare that most people probably don't know about then Wangan Trial will be a very good arcade racer for you to look at Released as the final game in the series on the PS1 in Japan back in 2000, Toge Max G, like its predecessor Toge Max 2, is a further evolution of the series when compared to the original game that started it all. The game greatly improves on the previous two games in terms of the overall graphical quality of 
the visuals on the screen even in terms of the cars and the handling physics within the game even down to the lighting physics you also do have access to multiple array of different types of japanese style cars that are all within the jdm market as it focuses primarily on cars from that region but the one thing to note with this game as with the previous two games in the series is its mix of arcade style racing but it heavily influences and it's inspired by drift style racing and like the previous two games in the series and even other arcade racers that were released in japan and other regions toge max g really revolutionizes the drift mechanics with the control system in the game and is considered to be the best in the series but also one of the best visual racing games on the system so if you're looking for a good mix of arcade with drift style racing and that has really good graphics Toge Max G is highly recommended to have a look at GT Max Rev was released in 1997 in Japan for the PlayStation 1 and was inspired by the All Japan Grand Touring Car Championship. The gameplay focuses around the popular touring car championships of the 90s and the gameplay is very very similar to a lot of other similar style GT games that were also released in Japan and were exclusive to the PlayStation in that region also. It is also very comparable to the Toka Touring Car series that was released in Europe as they have a very similar gameplay style and you have a good mix of different types of tracks on offer with a lot of cars to choose from from a variety of manufacturers from Toyota to Nissan Mazda all with kitted out and tuned cars that were catered for the championship itself gameplay has a hint of arcade elements but does focus a lot more on the simulation aspects of the racing in each of the events as the handling physics can take some time to master especially if you're a beginner and you're new to the game where you do have to play through the campaign and competing championships to move your way up the ranks to increase your skill level and to win the different tier championships that are on offer within the game so that you can unlock extra vehicles extra tracks and other unlockables within the game and as GT Max Rev is very similar to a lot of similar style games as I mentioned on the system there's no reason why you shouldn't have a look at this also So here we have taken a look at yet another unique list of quirky and fun racing games only seen in Japan for the PlayStation, each with their own unique features, pros and cons, while also quite rare to find, but offer up enough unique characteristics to make them fun and worthwhile playing if you're a fan of racing games. And I would love to know your thoughts on the games in this list if you have played them yourself and what do you think of them? I'd love to hear your story so be sure to share them down in the comments below. And if you have enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more videos in this series where we will be looking at more unique and rare racing games that were only seen in Japan then make sure to leave a like on the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell icon to be updated when future videos are released. So be sure to check out the next video in the series and until next time make sure to keep playing those classic games and enjoying them and keep those gaming memories alive.